There's two reasons why you need to service your antifreeze. And the interval that they recommend in pretty much most magazines, most vehicles, is every two seasons. Every two years, you're supposed to change your antifreeze. Why do I have to change it every two years? Because the additives wear out. Just like in a jug of oil, there's an additive package. That additive package is what prevents the uh, rust from forming, prevents the calcium and the lime buildup. That's this scale that you see on these cylinder planings. I'm trying to prevent that, and those additives can only do so much, and they wear out. Is that what you call a cool and flush thing? Yes. So the normal, if you just buy ordinary antifreeze, this is the recommended interval. If you change it every two years, it comes with a new package, and it's fine. If you open your radiator and you look at it, it looks very clean, it looks really nice, you check it, it goes down to a real low temperature, and you're like, well, my, my temperature is fine, I don't really want to change it, there is something else you can do, and that's add the additives back in. You can actually buy liquid additives, which would be what this jug is. And we're going to talk about how you know that here in a minute. And what color should your uh, coolant mixture be if it's, you know, Green. decent? Green. Green? Pretty much standard antifreeze is going to be green. If your antifreeze is not green, let's say it's red, that's a special type of antifreeze, and it's not standard. What I'm talking about here is standard antifreeze. If it's red, what it is is like a synthetic antifreeze. And it probably will last more than two years. It'll last like five or six years. No, I mean, it's like in your car and you're looking at coolant. If it's Where not it's green or like a red color, if it's brown, it's rusty. Like you've gone so far past the brown, rusty area that you're, you're like, you're in trouble. <laughs> so in that case, if your system looks rusty, you need to do a flush. You probably should put some of the acid flush in there and run it because your cylinder walls are probably looking like this. And I can't remember if it's in here. I think it's actually in this packet. It tells you the thickness of this calcium or lime buildup. It gives me a number and how much it changes the temperature. And I can't remember what it is. It's a pretty significant change with like a millimeter of, of debris that's on here. So it's pretty significant. So if you have a lot of buildup in your engine, it will actually cause your cylinder liners to overheat and your engine to overheat, and you'll have plenty of antifreeze in there. So you want to change that and probably flush it. While we're at this area here, I want to talk about a different kind of antifreeze. Just like in oils, you can go buy standard antifreeze. I'm hand that around. Yeah. You can go buy standard antifreeze, and it has a life expectancy of about two years. Or you can buy kind of a semi-synthetic antifreeze, and it has an extended life. And so hopefully if you've done any looking at magazines, you'll see extended life antifreeze. This is just an example. Chevron, Chevron and Texaco now own each other. And so you got Chevron's Dext Cool, and you have Texaco's something cool. Texaco cool or something. It might even be. But anyway, it's an extended life antifreeze. And some new manufacturers of vehicles come with extended life antifreeze that you're supposed to get 300,000 miles out of six years or something like that. This stuff here has a warranty and a life expectancy of 300,000 miles in six years. That's how long the additive package lasts. And so if you put it in there, instead of every two years draining it out, trying to figure out how to dispose of it, buying new antifreeze, or buying some sort of additive, additive to bring it back up to par, this antifreeze actually lasts longer. And it will protect you longer instead of changing it all the time. Do you trust it? Yeah, you do? I would. I They took it out, so it was worthless. <sighs> there is different people that say different things. So I wouldn't trust George, actually. What I say is 
do the research. That's what I say. Ask people, find out what they've been running. There are different things out there and different um, conflicting ideas. Some of the problem that I've been able to interpret or get from people, they've had problems with it, but what happened is that they've mixed it. Yeah. They've got this synthetic stuff and somebody went and put regular stuff in it. Or they had regular and tried to add this to it. And if you read the information, it says six years if you have flushed the system and put straight synthetic. Now, I'm not trying to sell this product. All I'm trying to do is get you aware there are other products out there that if you put the money into it, can save you service time and downtime in the future. But at the same token, you got to make sure someone doesn't mix it. If I was running a fleet, like I was running the maintenance department, and I wanted to run over to synthetic oil, I would have to make sure the oil was locked up and nobody had access it but one person. Same thing would have to do with the antifreeze. You don't want somebody just pulling antifreeze off the thing because antifreeze is antifreeze if I'm running a higher quality antifreeze in particular vehicles. And so it's one of those things we kind of need to make the decision across all of your fleet. Don't do a couple of them unless one person's in charge of that. But there are stuff that does reduce service and downtime in your cooling system. So just kind of be aware of that. 